Hello everyone and good morning and welcome to a new video. Welcome to 2021. Today I wanted to talk about something kind of minor here. Specifically, I wanted to talk a bit about map design and it's something I've been thinking about for a bit regarding using the corners. And I thought it would be fun to just walk through the Vision Quest ROM, open an FE Builder, and talk a bit about this concept because I think one thing that really helps with making maps more interesting and engaging is when you're encouraged to split and would you use all of the space. I think a common criticism that I hear about maps that people don't like is often that the map doesn't make good use of the space and that there's places on the map that you never really visit and that exist but serve no purpose. Whether that's a path that you don't go down, whether that is extra space that enemies exist in that you never have a real reason to go towards, or it's so far off where you would need to go to accomplish anything that it's not worth pursuing. I guess I just restated the same thing three times, but my point stands that I think using the corners is really important. And I'll illustrate that a little bit um, I know I don't do this perfectly, I don't do this every time, and you shouldn't feel obliged to do it every time to make a map good. I think this is one technique you can consider when designing your maps to make sure that you make your maps more interesting. I think people want to avoid maps being too linear or feeling like, okay, this is my one path to go down and that's it. And sometimes maps like that are fun, but if you want people to split up or if you want um, perhaps more replay value. I recommend trying to do this multi-split method and I think thinking through the corners is really key. So I'll go through each of these maps and we'll, and we'll talk a little bit about the corners. So here's map 1-1. One, one. You can see my cursor in my little red box here. Um, player starts bottom left corner, house in top right corner, house in bottom right corner, boss's top right corner, exits bottom right corner. Right? There's an incentive to go each of these different directions versus just, okay, I'll just go this way with everyone. I have a reason to, to split up. So this is just like one quick example here. Let's see, map one, two. This map actually has less of a reason to do it. This is actually, I kind of view this as like challenge mode. If you want to split and go up this way, you certainly can, but there's no real incentive to. There's a vulnerable on this guy that you can steal, I guess. But this map actually, it gives you two paths, but you only really need to go this way. Um, you have Natsuko who joins in turn two here. There's actually not a real reason to split this way. I like playing by splitting. I just think it's more fun. So the option's there if you want it. Um, I think for the flow of this map that it works out okay. But it doesn't surprise me that everyone players are like, I'm just going to like send everyone this way because I'm worried about these guys dying. Which is totally justified, especially when you're playing blind. So this one, not a great use of using all the corners. But you can kind of see here, if you want to challenge yourself, you go up, right, and then top right. Use the full space of the map. This map, kind of similar, bottom left. Um, you, have re you have a house in each corner. So you have incentive to go on two different paths here. You have in the top left, not so much going on explicitly in the top left, a little bit more top center, but you have Marlin and this house to recruit. You have a reason to go in the center as well. So again, it encourages you to fan out this chapter. Also using the corners, right? You have bottom left as player. Top left is a hand axe that you may want to rush towards because this pirate reinforcement comes around like turn um, three. So you want to make sure you get there. And the czar and this chest are in the bottom right and the boss is in the top right and there's some other stuff in the middle. So again, a reason to fan out. Do you need to split on this map to get everything? Most likely. I think in hard mode, I've seen people who just kind of commit to one path and just say, you know, screw the torch or screw the hand axe. I'm willing to do that because this map is, is a doozy. It's a hard map. Um, this map, a bit different because it's an escape map. And so we're kind of just going down this linear path. Let me try and expand this a bit here. Let me uh, just fix that. Yeah, we can't really get the full map in this view here, but um, okay. So we can't get the full map in view, but you can just imagine the exits a little bit below this section here. Doesn't really use all the corners super well. I mean, you can theoretically just go down this path and win. Um, this is really more of like a challenge map where I'm saying, hey, 
You can go down the right for the easiest path to just end the map quickly. You can go down the middle to fight some more enemies and get experience. There's stuff on the left side you may want to consider. So generally, I think when I play this map, I usually like to go down the middle mostly and send a few on the right side to like stymie reinforcements from here and then kind of use like Natsuko or Esphere with Pass to go get these chests. Um, not really a great example of that, but I think for an escape map, you're generally going from point A to point B. And so the four corner thing isn't as important, but I'm sure you could design something interesting with that in mind. Um, one six to be a hero. This is a defend map, not really so much on the corners. I mean, you have this happening up here, Sri and Dewey join in the top right. So you need to talk to them. House on the bottom right, house on the top left, bottom left. This map is a little bit more linear. You can, re I think really the split is above and below the house um, just to kind of wall off these different um, points. I've seen a lot of mixed reviews on this map. Some people really like it, other people don't. I like it as a timed boss challenge. I think that it's fun. Um, I just like fog maps in general, but there's certainly different ways you can approach this map. I personally like to do above the house, below the house, converge here, and then try and rush the boss and steal everything. I think it's fun. Fun kind of challenge map. Uh, one seven. I think the split here is pretty straightforward. You're starting bottom center and you have to go through the bottom two corners. Uh, and the top corners have chests. Gunner is at the top left, of course. Boss on the top center. So you're kind of making these two rounds. Of course, you can do the scry as a strat and just send everyone up to the right, which is totally valid. Um, there's not really a strong incentive to go up here faster. And that's partially by design because it's, a, it's also fog, and I think the gate here serves as a... What I, one thing I like here is that the, the thief starts here on turn one. When you see the gate open, you know someone's there. So it, it signals to the player that they need to rush up this side. And maybe that'll encourage people to rush. I don't know. This chapter I've never been super crazy about. Um, I think it's better now than it was in older builds, but it's one of those maps where it's like not bad enough to totally scrap and redo. But it was never my favorite. I think this is one of the easiest maps in the in part one. Uh, let's skip ahead a bit here to 17x. So this map also kind of using the corners. This is a bit different, right? We have some units here in the top left. You have Storch and Gunner, Bosco and Osane up in the top left. Your units are kind of in the middle right, and there's a chest in the top right. Bottom left is where the boss spawns. You have to go in the middle to the bottom. So there's a real reason to fan out. And part of this is because of the way your units are laid out. But just think of all the different spaces and paths you can take. And you don't even need to. Like when I play this map, I usually don't really send too many units down here. I might draw some out by going down here. But I'm mostly funneling through the middle. And this is kind of like the major choke point of conflict. That's one way to play the map. You could also send everyone down and use the terrain over here. Different approaches. So this is like that single... This is my probably my favorite map in the hack. Um, and this is actually counter to everything I'm about to say, but this map isn't really about the corners. This map is really about going down the sandbar and kind of dealing with threats as they come to you. I was really into FE6 when I made this map, and I felt that FE6 does a nice job of having these types of maps where, yes, you go down one path with all of your units, but there's so much pressure that it becomes really interesting. So I wanted to try emulating that. I think it's one of the strongest maps in the game, despite not doing what I normally do and maybe that's why um, it's good but either way the corner thing still applies to some degree right you have reinforcements who come from the forts here from over here in the top right top left more reinforcements bottom left more reinforcements bottom right some reinforcements and the boss or one of the bosses so the corner thing still applies there's but they're all charging at you so you have so it's almost like inverting the corner thing on its head where instead of you going to each of the corners each of the corners is coming to you and you're kind of getting closed in on here in this wide open space, which can really catch you off guard if you're not careful. So different approach, but again, using all the corners to make every part of the map matter to a degree. Let's see, what else we got here? Um, one eight. So this I think is really, I think a very good visual of each of the corner of the corner technique. Bottom left are players. Over on the right, you have Laios, who is on the verge of death. And no, you don't have to save the green units. You get no reward for saving green units. I will always, always include system techs if you get a reward for saving green units. And then the top left, you have the house with the light rune. 
and then the top right here is the boss and there's also some stealable stuff over here everything charges you at some point anyway so you probably don't spend too much time here but you still have to go in that direction so you may feel like okay i have a time split here i have a time split here and the boss is in the top right and then the two paths converge you can use this middle path as well so you have some options on how you want to best go about getting there but you do have to use really most of the terrain it's always a little bit different when enemies charge you then the terrain around becomes interesting. Do I choke off here? 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 Do I charge up further? Different options, different approaches. I think that makes for a dynamic and fun map experience. Then we have 1-9, which is, you know, I usually rail against symmetry. I think symmetry can be boring. I actually think this map is fun, despite its symmetry. And I think with symmetry, if your building is going to be structurally the same on each side, make the enemy composition different. I mean, yes, there's a lot of parallels here, but it's not identical. And so it incentivizes you to actually think about who you send on each side versus like, okay, it's the same regardless. It doesn't really matter. Um, so some things to consider. This isn't really super big on the corners, like this bottom left corner isn't really used. You kind of have to pass through it, pass through on the right. You can also just charge everyone up the center if you want, but Odaly will join from the bottom right. These chests are under pressure pretty quickly from these thieves here. So you have incentive to charge down both paths at the same time. Um, you have chests in the middle as well. And the Bolton guy, I just like the general pacing of this map. Um, you have reinforcements coming from behind. But the corners, again, top left, top right, you're encouraged to fan out. Because if you commit only to one side, you're going to lose one of these things. And I think there's a blue gem and a worm slayer, which are two things that you probably want to get. Okay. 110. So, kind of similar corners. You're in the bottom right. This map encourages you to fan out because of all of the different points you need to destroy. So, all the different supply tents need to be destroyed here. And they're all over the place. So you have incentive to split because it's also on a timer. But even then, you have to recruit Hollis and Zoya, who are up in the right corner. There are shops in the top right. Bottom left, you have Honeydew. And uh, this village, as well as a tent here to destroy. Top right is the boss and another tent. So you can see here very intentionally placing, kind of like, this map is almost like, here are the breadcrumbs that encourage you to like go around the structure in the middle versus sending everyone one way. So again, you're forcing the player to split, and I think that creates a ton of replay value and changes how you approach each map. Who do I send this way? I have different options. How do I build my teams? How do I build my one team, but then how do I split that into a second team? I think that's fun and interesting to consider. Uh, 111, this is like the oldest map still in the hack. This map has gone under probably the fewest number of revisions since its original conception, and that's why I think it looks really crappy. I know Pikmin thinks this map is ugly, and he'll say it's stinky. I'm sure he'll tell you that in the comments. Um, but what I like here is that the corners are being used, but it's because your army's four split. Bottom right, top left. Bottom left doesn't really get used. This is more just like narrative cutscene-y stuff I was experimenting with. I probably wouldn't do this again. Unless it was going to matter a bit more. Originally, Brumhilda would spawn here and she'd have all these different wyverns. Um, and they would all disappear, but I decided to just make it the one. Um, I kind of limited, but I wanted to have the story element still here in this map. I think in those cases, if you have like a cutscene-y reason to not use a corner or section of the map, then I think that's fine. I wouldn't recommend it all the time because you can see there's a lot of dead real estate. Like you never have a real reason to go down this way or like further down here. Like this is just like purely for show, which I'm not a fan of. I wouldn't do this again. But boss is in the top right, so still, the game forces you to split, but you still have reasons, you know, within the castle, right? Bottom left, bottom right, top left section you have to pass through, top right is where the boss is, different paths to get there, and then similarly, 1E. E. Uh, this map is super different. Um, one of the reasons why I never changed 111 is because I really like how 1E came out and I wanted to do this, you know, flipped perspective where you seize one map and then defend the next. I really like that idea as a concept in Fire Emblem. And I think this map is so much fun that even though 111 is weaker, I didn't want to change it. So sue me, I'm being lazy, but that should come to no surprise. But 
this map also kind of does the corner thing, but it's similar to 17XX. You're getting charged in from these different sides here. Um, you have incentive to go to the bottom right corner. The bottom left corner is the boss. This top left corner doesn't really get used, but you are getting pressured from it. So you have to consider how you wall off the top left. You can also charge down here if you prefer. Usually when I play this map, I kind of split down these two paths and kind of just have like one group kind of wall off everything that comes here while the other group slowly progresses and they converge here when the pressure's off. But um, there's so many different ways you can play this particular map. It really depends on your approach. Um, I know we've been going for like 15 minutes and this is actually a little later than I thought I would get started. So I'm going to stop here. I thought this would be a fun way for me to get back into recording. Let me know what you think, because I'm happy to do the other maps if you think that this is useful, kind of quick analysis of the corners. But I'm hoping that this at least illustrates um, some of the key things that I consider or think about when I'm designing my maps. Is Do I have a reason to go to each of the corners? Do I have an incentive to split? And if I don't, do the enemies at least traverse through the terrain in a meaningful way that applies pressure? Like going back to 17XX, it's like, yes, there's like this wasted blue space, but it's also a timer for you. You know the pegs are going to be here, and then you have to figure out how to deal with them in enemy phase. And I think that's unique, at least in Vision Quest, where you have these enemies in places where you probably aren't going to be able to reach them reliably. So it, it serves its purpose, right? You have to worry about what's happening in these corners, even if you don't necessarily traverse there. So different approach, but again... It's not like everything's just being funneled through this one path and you only have to worry about one side. You're getting attacked from all sides. Every corner matters and each corner kind of serves as a soft timer to how you wall that off, which I think is fun, a little bit more challenging to balance, but something to consider. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. I am Pandan and happy 2021, guys. Let me know what you thought of this and if I can answer any questions about map stuff. Until then.